Hi everyone, how's it going? Team here, and this is part five of building data science with JavaScript. We already did the input service and uh, first processing service for our data. It's time to store it somewhere. And in this part, we're going to talk about the storage microservice that is going to, first of all, store the data somewhere in uh, MongoDB in this case. And then uh, second of all, it's going to send it for processing and enrichment, uh, which enrichment we'll touch on later. For now, we're just going to talk about processing, right? So before I talk about the implementation of the storage service, I want to touch a bit on uh, small changes that I did to the uh, previous services. First one being the fix for the uh, handling of the broken review URIs. So it might happen that you know you actually get um, you cannot fetch the external URI for review, which will throw some error. And in this case, I just catch it in line, like after the await, and I return uh, nothing, right? And that means, you know, if there's nothing uh, fetched, I just return the same review again. So basically, the database will get the review without text, which won't be processed by any of our processors, since they rely on the text. Quite simple. And obviously, you know, the unit test to make sure that it actually works. Right. Second change is to the processing service. So uh, what I did was change the result key from store to update. Uh, this is for uh, simplification of the distinction between, you know, the um, articles that we need to store initially and articles we want to update. Uh, I've added the timeout to the um, coronal P request. This is basically the default timeout was too small for some of the articles because they are quite large. And, you know, we actually want to wait for them to process, not just shut down at the first side of that. We don't care about the speed here, we care about precision. And then I changed the ID to underscore ID since we're gonna rely on MongoDB and this is what the MongoDB uses, right? So that's that's about it. Now there's the storage service and uh, for that I'm gonna go to the uh, VS Code here. The storage service is pretty straightforward. So in this case, we're not gonna use um, microcore, we're gonna use microwork directly because we don't actually care about replies and so on and so forth. It's basically a data sync, right? So it's gonna listen for the incoming articles and just save them to database and maybe trigger some other stuff. So as you can see here, where we have this database uh, file, which is essentially a MongoDB connection. Uh, for now, it's hard coded to localhost and database is called data science. And the only thing we have now is article schema and article, which uh, has the ID, which is unique and indexed as an external URL, which is uh, also unique. And then there's other day that is generated by uh, default to date now. So whenever the article is dated, and then there's a text, uh, which should be a string. And I also said that, you know, it's going to be um, not strict. So basically, this uh, tells to mongoose that we allow saving arbitrary fields, because I'm not 100% sure about the schema now as we're going to add more processing services, and we're going to see what kind of properties we actually need here, right. So I export the article I export DB and I export uh, connected to DB promise, which is quite simple. So it resolves whenever the DB is connected, because we need to wait for it actually before doing anything else, right. So uh, then we have the same logger as before, uh, Q config again, same as before. And then we have a list of processors. So this is another bit we're going to talk about in a second. Right. So same as in an input microservice, we create a micro work instance, we subscribe to um, store in this case. And basically, whenever the article comes, we just save it. And then we send it to processors. Here's the interesting bit. If you remember, we used microcore that had this status plugin that send the status to microcore service. That means if we subscribe to this microcore service, we can actually listen to information from processors. And whenever that information comes, we can add it to our processors array, right? This way, we will know what kind of processors are available for uh, processing actually. So um, right now, this is very stupid, because I just save everything in there. Actually, in the future, we're gonna split them by type. But you know, this is like, very basic implementation. So this, I just save whatever services are out there. And then when the article comes, I actually just iterate over all those processors and send the article to each one of them. Because this is what we want to do this one of process, right? Um, one caveat here, I didn't handle the same doc exception. So it might happen that you get the same article twice. I'm not sure you know, like, normally that wouldn't happen or shouldn't happen. But it might happen. And you know, if it's code 110, and it's already exists, and actually doesn't really matter for us. And if there's some other error saving, then we actually want to uh, know what the error is. And there should be a 
send, we should be sending it to the error uh, topic here to the RabbitMQ. That's something we'll implement later. And then we have the update requests uh, that are different from storage. They expect that the document has underscore ID and they uh, find it by, so they take the document, they find it by this underscore ID and they store the data inside of it, right? So this is actually the whole um, database service, very straightforward. So the trickiest part, I guess, is looking, listening for processors and then uh, sending it to processor and then updating documents when the processors return it. That's about it. Uh, unit tests are also quite straightforward. So again, we use this uh, test data we had before. We start the service, we uh, test that it actually, you know, gonna run it to the processors. We send the simple article to save and make sure that it actually returned to our test processor, which is a fake processor essentially. Uh, we try saving the same article to make sure that, you know, it actually only saves once, does not try to push it a second time. And we try to update the article, so make sure that updates actually work. And you know, as long as this passes, you should be good. Once again, the two dependencies, first of all, RabbitMQ, obviously, and then second of all, uh, MongoDB. So we have here uh, yarn command or npm commands, I mean, npm scripts that execute all of them via Docker. Um, this is not how we're gonna run it in the end, obviously, but you know, for testing purposes, that works perfectly fine. And that's actually about it. So I'm gonna open a parent directory right now. And uh, we're gonna have a look at the services document here. So as you can see here, we now have this uh, storage service. We now have processing kernel P and we now have open critic input, right? So we have three more uh, processing services left and then Wikipedia or Wikidata enrichment service left, right? And after that, we can start building the UI and actually visualizing the data and trying to gain some insights from it. So I'm thinking that I'm probably gonna do one large live stream to implement all three of those because um, those two at least should be trivial because there are libraries that already do that for you even in Node.js, nothing uh, too fancy here. Box will be a bit trickier, but still that shouldn't be too hard to do. So I think it's maybe a two hour stream will do it. After that, we're gonna talk about a bit more about enrichment, Wikidata and uh, maybe DBpedia actually links. So I'm gonna talk a bit about semantic web and uh, that kind of area, Sparkle, RDF and all that stuff. Uh, gonna be exciting, I hope so. Uh, and uh, yeah, so there's gonna be two live streams, two more videos, and then we're gonna go to the front end bits, uh, visualizations, and kind of trying to get insights from what we gathered. Um, that will be it for this episode. Thank you for watching and as usual, I see you next time. Bye.